Welcome to the Physics 121 pre-lecture video on statics of rigid body motion. When we talk about statics, what we mean is the application of Newton's second law to systems which are motionless, that is, not moving at all, at rest. And we're usually talking about rigid bodies, bodies with some physical extent. So for example, if I take a pencil and I balance a pencil on my fingers, like this, balancing on one end and the other and the other about three-fourths of the way, uh, that pencil held still, that corresponds to a static example. So first we draw a sketch, keep track of what the known parameters are. So for example, in this problem I'm going to represent the pencil as a rod of mass uh, given m and a length given l. And um, I'm going to rest the rod at two points, one on the left, right at the end of the rod, and one about three-fourths the way down the rod. So we'll mark that distance as three-fourths of the length, where the one end of the rod is supported at the zero point at end, and the other end is at three-fourths uh, L. The other end point is at three-fourths L, where my hand is right there. Okay, so we want to know what are the forces on the rod? What are the forces applied by the fingers or the trestles? So we consider the acceleration in both linear and rotational form. And for statics problems, this is easy. The acceleration is x, a sub x is equal to a sub y is equal to a is just zero, zero linear acceleration. And likewise, there's no rotational acceleration either. So now we found the standard recipe for applying Newton's second law in linear form, just the way we did in the beginning of cycle one. So we represent the body, in this case the rod, free body diagram of the rod, we represent it as a point. And uh, we ask what are the forces on the rod? So there's a force weight down, and then there's two forces normal pushing up, one on the left at the end, and one sort of three-fourths the way too. They both push up, so uh, I'm going to label those 1 and 2, the left one being 1 and the right one being 2. So we have normal force 1 up and normal force 2 up. And of course we need a coordinate system pointing up, and that's our free body diagram. So now we apply Newton's second law in the y-coordinate. The net force in the y-correction is equal to m times a sub y, which of course is 0. So n1 plus n2 minus the weight is equal to 0. So I have an equation, n1 plus n2 minus mg is equal to 0. This is a nice equation, but it has two unknowns, n1 and n2, and so I'm not done. I have one equation with two unknowns. I have to keep going. I don't know what n1 is. I don't know what n2 is. So now that we've applied Newton's laws in linear form, it's time to consider applying the recipe in rotational form. We'll start with an extended free body diagram. So. What do we mean by um, an extended free body diagram? Well, the idea is that we regenerate the same free body diagram that we just did, but we extend it so that instead of calculating forces, we can calculate torques. So the main idea is that we draw a picture of the image. We need to, since it's an extended object, we need to draw a picture. So here's my extended free body diagram box for the rod. We need to draw a picture of the rod. So We'll take a look at the rod for a second. There it is. It's just a little rectangle there, a narrow rectangle. So I kind of make a simple sketch of the rectangle. I don't need a lot of details in this picture of this object. I just need the outline to make sure I know where the forces are applied. The idea is that we want to apply the forces, exactly the same forces we had on our free body diagram, on the extended free body diagram. So for example, the weight force applies right at the center of mass point. There it is, right at the center. And the weight force always applies at the center of mass point. That's the whole idea of how the weight force works. And just like the free body diagram, on the extended free body diagram, it points down. But it applies right at the middle. And then we have the two normal forces. And of course, we know where the normal forces apply because we can see the picture, the image, uh, where the two trestles are. One normal force applies on the left, and the other applies three-fourths the way towards the right. So we put exactly those same forces on the free body diagram that on my extended free body diagram, n1 on the right and n2 three fourths of the way over. It's very important that they have exactly the same forces on both diagrams. Be sure to include a pivot point 
and a coordinate indication. So what do we mean by a pivot point? A pivot point basically is the point about which we are rotating. The pivot point can be anywhere on your free body diagram. For statics, it's convenient to choose a pivot point that corresponds to one of your unknown forces. So we're going to choose to calculate torque's pivoting about the left side of the rod. That's my pivot point. And then I've got to define a positive direction of rotation. And for statics, it doesn't matter which way you do it, but the convention is to define positive as counterclockwise. So counterclockwise will correspond to positive tor torque. So now we apply Newton's second law in rotational form. Newton's second law in rotational form is exactly the same as F equals MA, except with the analogs of torque. The net torque is equal to the rotational inertia times alpha. We don't know I, but that's okay because in this case, alpha is zero. So we just add up the torques. So there's three forces, so there's three torques. There's the torque due to the normal force one, there's the torque due to the normal force two, and the torque due to the weight, and the three of those must sum up to be zero. So we actually have to calculate those torques, and to do that, we need the definition of torque. The definition of torque is basically our expression of the cross product. It tells us how to get torque given the accelerator given the force. So the definition of torque is that the torque associated with a particular force is defined as the cross product of R and F, or R times F times sine theta, where R is the distance from the pivot point to the location where the torque is applied. So for example, the torque associated with normal force one is zero because there's no distance between the pivot point and where normal force one is located. The torque associated with normal force two is that distance, three force L uh, times N two. So R in this case is three force L. And the torque associated with the weight, well in this case the distance is half the distance of the bar, so it's L over two, uh, times in the weight force, which is Mg. And we notice that in the case of the weight force, it's applied in the negative direction. So this, we now just use Newton's second law. We add or subtract as relevant the torques and, uh, and, and tally things up. So in other words, it's zero, the torque of number one, plus three L force N2 minus L over two Mg, that's equal to zero. That's the equation with all the torques plugged in. And now we just solve. So we multiply uh, by four and divide by L. So we get three N2 minus two Mg is zero. So N2 is equal to two-thirds mg. So the normal force on the second point to the right is two-thirds the weight of the, the bar. And now, of course, we use our original equation where we had uh, Newton's second law. So that told us that N1 plus two-thirds mg, that's N2, is equal to minus the weight is mg. So that lets us calculate N1, which is now one-third of the mass. So the total normal force compensates the weight, we have calculated the two values.